I only vaguely know who this guy is because YouTube used to spam me with him on my home page. Like many attention-craving narcissists on YouTube, he loves to use what I like to call the manic serial killer thumbnail, which is somehow considered funny and appealing. I was instantly revolted, but eventually I decided to punish myself by suffering through a few minutes of one of his videos. Since then I've tried to avoid this freak, and I feel sorry for anyone who regularly watches his videos. Matthew Santoro is the king of clickbait, and as you'll see, he actually recycles other clickbait. He's so lazy, unoriginal, and worthless that he can't even create his own pointless drivel. On a hunch, I googled Matthew Santoro plagiarism and found this page on Reddit. As I expected, he's a fucking plagiarist. This post was written by Elias Nixon three months ago. As Elias points out, Matthew Santoro goes to shitty websites that post lists of ten things and Matthew Santoro steals the titles, steals most of the things listed and the pictures associated with them, and even quotes the articles almost verbatim. He does all of this without citing anything. Now I'm going to play Matthew's videos while showing the text that he plagiarized. So here he almost completely plagiarizes a list of ten weirdly famous people. In a better world, Matthew Santoro would be on this list. He's famous for plagiarizing clickbait. Number one is Plenty Wingo. In 1931, a guy named Plenty Wingo was talking to some friends about publicity stunts when he came up with his own. He decided to walk backwards around the world. With a pair of reflective glasses and a sign pinned to him stating what he was doing, he set off on his journey. He made it 13,000 kilometers before being sent back over a border dispute with Istanbul. 45 years later, he started a new journey, this time walking 635 kilometers from San Francisco to Santa Monica. And that journey was enough to land him in appearance on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Number two is Ikkyu Sojan. Ikkyu Sojan was a monk who lived in Japan between 1394 and 1481. Being a part of Mahayana Buddhism from an early age, he rose through the ranks until he was ultimately bestowed the honor of Zen Master only to quit two weeks later to pursue a life of drinking and whoring. Not willing to give up the life of a monk, nor the life of drunk whoring, he founded his own school of Zen philosophy called the Red Thread, which adopts a focus on the erotic. Number three is Bill Britt. In 1969, Bill Britt, a former insurance salesman, decided to leave his wealthy lifestyle to go live in a makeshift tent on government property. He lived there for 16 years before his tent was destroyed, but that didn't stop him. He was successful framing himself as a victim to the media which garnered him enough attention to make it onto The Late Show with David Letterman. After that, he rebuilt his tent and continued to live on government property, making money from selling bottles and cans and refused any form of charity or help until he died on March 9, 1988. Number five is Dave Bodden. Dave Bodden is an American citizen who found fame after publicly claiming to be the reincarnation of Christ. And if you think he's crazy, he's got over 100 people that follow him. He also claims to be the one true Pope after holding his own election in March of 2005, which consisted of six votes, including those from himself and his parents. He continues to this day to call himself the Pope and has even had a documentary made about him. Number six is Dave Johnson. One day in the 1980s, Dave Johnson decided that he was going to dress up as a bush and scare people that walk by him. But after a while, he became very well known in his city, San Francisco, and even started making up to $60,000 a year from tips from the very people he was scaring. However, in 2004, the local district attorney tried to shut his operation down after countless complaints started rolling in. Believe it or not, he won that case and continued to do it right up until he died at the beginning of 2014. He had amassed a legion of fans and even had his death announced in newspapers all over California. Number seven is Robert Coates. In 1810, Robert Coates began performing in theaters despite not being a trained performance actor. His performances were universally hated due to the fact that he frequently broke character, wore tacky outfits, and generally just gave really bad performances. Despite the fact that audiences routinely threw food at him, he continued his performances for six years until ultimately his bad performances are what he became known for.
before. In fact, audiences began showing up just to see how bad he really was to the point where before his retirement, he was selling out events, turning thousands away. Number eight is Dick Wilson. In 1964, the Charmin Toilet Paper Company created a series of commercials starring actor Dick Wilson, who played a character named Mr. Whipple. The commercials themselves weren't that amazing, but for some reason, the American public became infatuated with the character of Mr. Whipple. Because of that, he went on to star as that character in 500 commercials, spanning a career of 21 years. In fact, in a 1978 poll, Mr. Whipple was the third most recognizable man in America, right behind Richard Nixon and Billy Graham. Number nine is Alvin Kelly. In 1924, stuntman Alvin Kelly decided to climb a flagpole and sit on it to promote a nearby theater. He was able to sit on it for a total of 13 hours and 13 minutes, launching him into a career where he sat on flagpoles for a living. The thing was though, in order to keep the novelty of his act from wearing off, he continuously had to break his own record, which he continued to do right up until his very last performance, where he sat on a flagpole for a total of 49 days in a row. For his troubles, he earned a total of $100 an hour for six years until the Great Depression hit. And in case you were wondering, he survived up there by consuming only liquids and peeing through a tube in his pants. And number 10, Ruthie Fontanini. Ruthie Fontanini was a 26 year old tavern operator from Iowa who became famous for the way that she served beer, by placing the mug on a boobies and carrying it to customers. Once she became well known for that, she got in trouble twice with the law, which only further boosted her infamy. But unlike most of the other people on this list, she never tried to cash in on her fame and instead opted to fade into obscurity and quietly get married. I think the most interesting part of this story is that before before her fame was over, somebody had named a pair of mountains after her called the Ruthies. Number four is the dire wolf. Dire wolves existed beside early men and were much larger, stronger, and had sharper teeth than the wolves of today. Interestingly, they were just one of a class called megafauna, which were a large or giant class of animals, including humans. And believe it or not, some of these giant humans still exist today, including Rosie O'Donnell, Roseanne Barr, and Kevin Smith. I realize this probably isn't going to have any effect at all because his fans had to be completely retarded to subscribe to him even without knowing he's a plagiarist. But of course there's barely anything you can do about these people. Most of the things that probably should be done are illegal. And unfortunately I can't flag all of his videos because I don't think uploading stolen spam is against the community guidelines. But I can start a Patreon and start copying his videos word for word. This video justifies that course of action. So be sure to like this video, share it on Facebook and Twitter, add me to Snapchat, and don't forget to subscribe.